What's up, everybody? I want to say thank you to all of the patrons. If you are interested in joining the group, some of you guys who are in the highest tier get a one-on-one -on -one video lesson with me every month. I do Q and A's once, sometimes twice a month. I also do things like deep dives on kickflips. Um, if that's something that you're interested in, there is a link below in the description. So a little bit different today. I'm at a curb. Why am I at a curb? Because I've covered levels of different tricks before, but today I'm going to actually show the different levels of an ollie in action. And what inspired me to make this video is kind of a pest. So I made like kind of a rookie mistakes video. I'm still debating if I want to actually upload this one because I kind of uploaded it first response to having to block some pest. And there was a dude, here's the thing, when we're learning, there are different types of mentalities that some of us attract, right? And in my experience, the most successful mentality to take when you're learning is that you accept responsibility for how quickly and how well you're able to accomplish new tasks that you're learning. But there are some of us who have what's called an external locus of control. If that's you, that means you're the type who focuses on external forces and believe that they're responsible for what you're able to do as opposed to an internal locus of control meaning you place responsibility blame whichever of those or a combination of both on yourself and you use that to motivate you to either be better to get rid of the bad choices to get rid of the negative movements maybe to fix your comprehension skills so that you can follow more closely and uh follow more accurately something that you're being taught. Now, I happen to be in the latter camp, but I was not always there when I was a bit younger. I would look for excuses and things to blame, and it seems like that's what's going on. So I had someone who's commenting about the way that I teach in Ollie, and this particular person was complaining that they thought I was gonna confuse beginners by teaching them not to lift up their legs and then pop. and. I, there's a reason that I teach this. So when I learned to Ollie, I've always been an athletic person. So I was able to teach myself how to turn backflips first from a back handspring and then a round off backflip. Like I could still probably do a standing backflip. I don't really do them much because they're more risky. When I was a kid, I'd climb onto swing sets and flip off. Always been an athletic kid. So when I saw people ollieing, I was able to look at that and make it happen from my body. I also started at 13 years old, so I had a little bit more athletic experience than some people. But I, where I ran into issues was, it was fine learning how to pop higher, but when I tried to skate things that were a little bit lower, there would be an issue. And the issue was, I was doing the ollie that you will learn later, where you squat down as hard as you can, you push yourself up, and then once you've already risen a bit, you pop your tail and you pull your knees up. Now that's great if you're trying to do the biggest ollie in the world, but the problem is for most beginners, they're not starting from a place like I started from, where they've been climbing up on top of swing sets and front flipping off and climbing onto their roof and back flipping off and lining up kids back to back and running and front flipping over them. Most people are starting from a place of average athleticism because most people are going to come from a place of average athleticism. So if you give the person the task of trying to ollie the way I ollie now, it's gonna make things a lot more difficult for them. And what I've learned over the past 13 years of teaching people how to skate, teaching people how to ollie, is that starting with something like this, it's always gonna be easier than starting with something like this. So technically, those are the same trick, but in practice, it's a completely different set of movements. The latter being one that you develop as your athleticism develops, as you're more comfortable on a skateboard, as you start to be able to break things down into parts. And maybe if one day you get to where I'm at, where when I do tricks on a skateboard, 
it actually feels like things are slowing down. That's because I've done these things tens of thousands of times. I couldn't count the amount of times that I've ollied over the past nearly 26 years through a full professional career, teaching people how to skateboard and things like that. Someone starting out is not in the same position, so they're not gonna have the same awareness of their body, they're not gonna have the same physicality that someone like me has. And so as someone whose job it is to make the skill acquisition at the beginning of skateboarding, which is arguably one of the more difficult parts of your learning curve, right? I have to break things down into movements that are gonna be simple for beginners. And what I learned is teaching them to push themselves off the ground with their ollie is the easiest way. And the other thing is, the reason I learned the ollie this way is because of curbs and manuals, tricks like that. And I'm gonna demonstrate to you why? So I'll be using some video examples. So when we go to skate a curb, when I first tried to really pop on the curbs and do different tricks, the problem that I had was I would always overshoot and end up too far inside of the ledge and off balance. And the reason was I was doing what I showed you earlier on as that, 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 that later ollie, where I was trying to, where I was ollieing in a way that is conducive to doing the highest ollie possible. But when you don't need all that height, when you're only trying to get six inches off the ground, that ollie's not gonna help you. And also, another instance where that ollie's not gonna help you is when you're trying to land in a manual or a nose manual uh, because you simply want to limit the amount of force that you're landing with so that you don't your balance isn't sapped by the fact that you're trying to control all of the force that you've put into the ground. And this is something that you wouldn't know if you hadn't come to this application. Let's go over an application. So I'm gonna move the camera over to the curb and have a different angle. And I'll show you guys how I ollie when I'm trying to grind a curb. And then I'll add some video examples of how I ollie when I'm ollieing up over something, when I'm trying to grind one of the large ledges that I skate. And you'll clearly see these are very different ollies. And I'll try to get some video of some manuals too so that I can show you guys because the first way that I teach people to ollie, it works. I've taught more than 200 people how to ollie. And that was in, I think, 2019 when I went through my phone and, and went through all of the names of the students that I've taught since I believe 2010. And it was over 200 then. Well, here we are nearly five years later, five years later, and I, I couldn't tell you how many people I've taught. And some of my students are ollieing upstairs now, and they're ollieing down five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stairs. Some of them are flipping in the handrails. And any student who was a student of mine learned how to ollie that first way that I teach and they weren't confused because if you think that skateboarding is like video games where you're going to learn one set of moves and it's going to translate through the rest of your skating and it's not going to evolve, you might be, you might have chosen the wrong hobby because every trick that you learn, when you reach another plateau, you're going to have to evolve that trick. You're going to have to evolve the set of movements that go along with that trick because skateboarding is not a static thing. Everything in skateboarding is fluid. Every obstacle is different and requires a different application of the same trick, which is what I seek to show you here. So that's a curb. Now we're gonna use this uh, fire hydrant here to show a different kind of ollie and show what I do with my legs when I need to pop over something. This is a very different type of ollie. Same trick, different application. Again, if you've never come to the point where you need to apply the trick in these ways, you wouldn't know. And that's why if you're in a position where you're learning, you shouldn't be presumptuous. another example of something big and the difference getting on something big versus those little curves how I use my ollie differently
So this is a ledge that I would still consider pretty low. Some would consider it a little high for them or even medium. I consider this just a standard height ledge and you'll see even a different type of ollie to get on this than on the other obstacles. This being a lower ledge, I'm still trying to pop when my knees haven't started to extend. It's not quite as low as for the curb, but it is low compared to the other higher ledges that I skated just a second ago. And we'll see more of this in the skate park when I skate the very low ledge versus when I skate the very high ledge. I'm trying to pop much earlier for the lower things. Pay attention to a couple of things. For one, this ledge and manual pad are very low, so I'm not having to bend my knees quite as low because of my height and how much of an explosion I can create. But the other thing I want you to notice is, especially on that 50-50, my legs did not start to rise before I popped, nor did they on that nose slide, because it's not necessary. And this is an application where the first ollie that I've taught will come into play. Because if I were to pop the way that I popped to get onto larger ledges, I'm gonna land on these small ones with too much force and not be able to balance, which is really important when it comes to crooked grinds and front crooked grinds and certain tricks like that. So now we're on the big guy and notice that there is some separation that happens. I'm squatting down as low as I possibly can or as low as I need to for this obstacle. And then I'm starting to rise before I pop. But the other thing that I want you to notice is that my head is not rising very much. I'm trying to keep my head low and actually pull my knees up to my chest so that I land on the ledge tucked in the same position that I landed on the lower ledge in. And that's so that I'm able to balance. Yes, sir. Okay, future me, I've got the virus that's been plaguing us since 2019 and I feel like crap, but I needed to record an exit for this video. So, this is actually, it's actually a good one to make because there are com these are completely different ways that you can ollie, and I use them basically any time that I skate. Um, like learning how to ollie first while you're very low, and you're just you're basically just using your ankle to push yourself off the ground and using your the explosion that you can create right that explosive movement that's gonna benefit you. Because first off, when you're a beginner, you're going to be skating, learning how to grind and slide on curves. And if you ollie the way that some people learn to ollie, the way that I learned to ollie at first, the curves are going to be a problem for you. And they were actually a problem for me for a long time. But the thing about me is when I started skating, I was already very athletic. Like I mentioned in the video, I was like back flipping off my roof and all kinds of crazy stuff. So wasn't really a problem for me to just jump right into ledges, you know. Um, I didn't have that barrier. But from what I've seen from beginners, and like I said, I've taught over 200 beginners now, they're just not in that place. And it's going to take a considerable amount of time, a year, two years, three years even for some people, uh, for them to get to that place. So if you start off with an ollie where you're trying to ollie two feet high, you're just not going to have the type of control that's necessary to use that ollie on something small. And as you saw, even me, if I'm skating a curb or if I'm skating a lower ledge, like particularly the crooked grinds and the front side crooked grinds, because you kind of have to be accurate with where you place those. And it's very difficult to be accurate with where you place your truck if you're doing the highest pop you can to get onto the lowest thing possible, right? So 
and th and another trick that this really gave me issues with early on was with 50 50s on handrails like i only knew one way to pop so when i would try to 50 50 a flat bar i would end up ollieing like this much higher than the flat bar so when i landed my board would either go in front or behind and i would flip over the ledge and it wasn't until i learned to taper my ollie and do the earlier version of the ollie that I that I teach all of my beginners now that I was able to make those 50/50s work and I still use that early ollie for those like I'm still attempting not to push my legs up and then ollie when I do when I skate smaller obstacles now I'm even I'm actually attempting to do this when I do the higher ollie but it's not it's not for the same reason there's a delay, right? Like we're not computers, we're not machines. So from your brain to your muscles, there's a delay. Now at my height, I'm 6'1", there's about a, I think it's about a 90 millisecond delay. So that's like a 10th of a second basically. And that your Ollie takes place in about a second. So you're delayed one tenth of that from when you initiate the movement in your mind to when it actually happens and that's 10 percent of the time that the entire trick takes so that means i'm going to aim to pop while i'm still down but i've already started to rise and so the actual pop is going to happen a little bit later and i i'm curious i obviously i can't study this myself but i'd be curious to know if there's a stacking effect because when you're doing an ollie it's a complex movement right it's a compound movement it's not just one thing that you're doing I'm squatting, I'm pushing myself out of the squat, I'm using my ankle to press down into the board and create the explosion that propels me vertically, and I'm also sucking up my knees and everything. So I'm interested to, I'd be interested to find out if there's like a stacking effect of that latency. Um, I'll probably never find out because uh, I doubt anyone will dive into studying that so deeply with skating. But yeah, I hope this video was useful. Uh, I'm going to stop because you can hear my voice is uh, gone.